Hello good people of the internet and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, or I should say, welcome back to Mia Faye. <laughs> Cause we're, that's who we're playing as now. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm going to die. Oh, I never should have accepted this case. Eek! Ah, good morning. Don't be so jumpy, Mia. I didn't do nothing, I swear. I didn't kill nobody. Terry Falls, my first client. Falls? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Sentenced to five years ago. Sentenced to death five years ago, and now a prison escapee. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax. <laughs> Bless you. Eh, um, so why did you escape anyway? Uh, uh, oh god, god. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't do nothing. I, I didn't kill nobody. I never, I never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. Uh, but, Mr. Falls, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Uh, sorry. I told a little lie. Oh, boy. But anyway, I, I didn't do it. I never killed nobody. Um, sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh, oh, God. I'm really, really sorry. Uh, they sent me, me to die five years ago, but I was tricked, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear it. I didn't kill her. I could never could do that. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Then, about eight hours later, a police woman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police believe that Terry Falls did it. Um, after you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. She was the reason I escaped. So that much is true. He did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her. She was alive when I left. She was alive. It's true. I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Uh, this might be Edgeworth. I don't know. Huh. No, that's Ooh. that's Godot. I'm pretty sure. Godot without his mask. Look at the hair. And I, the beard. I, 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 what? I'm pretty sure oh, that's shit. A, yeah. So he actually is, like, blind. That's why he's got the mask on. I guess. I honestly, like, I was just playing that up as, like, a joke thing, but holy shit, that's actually what happened. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. You're not going to figure out the truth just by staring at the guy. Y you're... Why are you here? Uh, can you see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lion's den? I thought maybe you'd like someone to play with. Uh, w where is Mr. Grossberg? Ha, that old man's probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me, Diego Armando. I, 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 I didn't say... So, Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Offices, is here for me? No, no, no. You've got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. He used to be a defense attorney, I guess? I think he's still a prosecutor. Look at the red. Also, I, I do want to say the, uh, the fucking vest and the tie and everything match. I mean, yeah, but... So his real name is Diego? I guess so. So, how did he become Godot? I don't know. But didn't, didn't she just say that he was the finest... Uh, attorney at Grossberg's offices. That implies that he's a defense, right? Because Grossberg's a defense attorney. Oh, yeah. So then maybe at one point he was. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. So then why did he go... Wait, if he was a defense attorney and he was wearing the red, why did he go to wearing the blue and the white? I don't know. I mean, not that, I, I mean, that, that like, much, but like... I mean, like, fucking uh, Payne used to wear green for some reason, so... That's true. And I think that changed that mostly just to get rid of the confusion with... Um, Gumshoe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe even Grossberg to an extent. I, I don't really think yeah. the color of the clothes matter that much. Probably not. But still, just seeing him in this younger with the striking, you know, hair and the red and everything, it's... Jeez. Yeah. Imagine. An escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks. Not sure what you could get out of it, though. Ha. Huh. Relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today... It's fresh out of his diapers as well. R r really However, unlike a certain somebody who I will mention, he's earned a reputation as a genius since beginning his law career. 
Gen genius? I'm sorry, I'm used to being Phoenix. I know. <laughs> well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours. It's go time. So wait, is Gwispar done with us? It's Yeah, I guess it's Mia, Mia and Armando, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm guessing the new person is probably Edgeworth. Like, he, when, like, because he, he would have been new at the time as well. What if it's Von Karma? Ooh. Well, no, he, he had a lot of years of experience, so... Uh, maybe. Maybe it's Pain. <laughs> uh, no, Pain, uh, apparently, is, uh, at, for me, as other second trial, is known as, like, a legend or something, right? Really? Remember, he was like... Pain? Yeah, he's like, I'm the legendary prosecutor. I've never lost a case or whatever, and then... Okay, every prosecutor says that, yeah. and then they'll lose against Phoenix anyway, yeah. so, I mean, <laughs> does it really matter? Right, yeah. Okay. A solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the most loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him. But not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple, childlike voice, I I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. I guess I should have been giving him a childlike voice instead of whatever that country accent was. But uh, I kind of like the deeper voice for him, though. I kind of think it makes sense, you know. Yeah. Maybe it's not childlike, but definitely the demeanor, I think, is kind of... Yeah, like, like, it's it's deep, but it's gentle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah? God damn it, I voice fucking everybody in this, except for the fucking... Oh, and it's the high judge. Oh, my God. And that's not just the judge, but younger? No, no, it's the other judge. Okay. Uh, court is now in session for the trial of Terry Falls. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. I understand the lawyers for both sides are newcomers. Y yes, Your Honor. I'm Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. So, you're the new prosecutor everyone is talking about, huh? They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. At 20, Your Honor. I guess our little kitten hasn't earned herself, herself much of a reputation yet, huh? Come on, Mia. You can't lose. Not to someone younger than you. Young people running a trial. Uh, I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Now then, uh, the defendant in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day that the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. So... So we're here to determine if Mr. Falls was responsible for her death? You got it, kitten. Well then, let's hear Mr. Edgeworth. Er, well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor. It was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. Just so you don't have to voice any everyone, do you want me to voice this judge? Please. Okay. Because it... it <laughs> fuck it, everybody, yeah. holy shit. Yeah, like, I didn't realize that you would get so many voices. I was really hoping that at least it would be, like, the regular judge, or, like, even a completely different judge altogether. Yeah. But, no. It's... Uh, yeah, because you've got Mia, and you've got Ghetto, and you've got Edgeworth. <laughs> and now also the fucking the high judge? Like, yeah, come yeah, on. yeah. So I'll at least take this other judge for you. Okay. Continue to make him, you know, with the kind of stonery voice. But... A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. Is that, is that okay? I suppose. I mean, it's a different type of stoner's voice, but yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. Correct. But in the end, what finally decided the case was a certain witness's testimony. It does a fucking, like, point thing like Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. A witness's testimony? The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted this criminal. Hawthorne. That's what I said. Yeah, so Dahlia Hawthorne. That must have been like her sister or something. Maybe her mom? Maybe. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls throw this young victim into the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. 
Most bodies that fall in, I never recover. Did you hear that, Eagle? You got a river named after you. <laughs> <laughs> so Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. That policewoman you just mentioned? That wouldn't be... Exactly. The victim. The same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Ah, oh, I see. That man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago. With only one thing in his mind, to take a revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now! The fuck is... That face, man. Yeah, I know. Huh? Yes, yes. It's quite obvious that the defendant is guilty. Wait a minute, that's not right. At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. Uh, watch yourself, Miss Fay. I'm not sure I would care for your word of choice or your tone of voice. What the fuck? Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. Your Honor. Why you? Oh. <clears throat> you, you're even younger than me, you hypocrite. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I call the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. Slightly younger go shoe. Yeah, hey, with the tan. <laughs> witness, state your name and occupation. Gumshoe. Dick Gumshoe. I'm the Hollis detective in charge of the case, sir. Dude, dude, if I did not take the judge's voice, you would have literally been voicing every single character. Except for Terry. Except literally for Terry. every single character. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. The Johnny sound effects special, everybody. <laughs> I felt like I promoted it to the to, to, I felt like I promoted to the detective division half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that. Hey, ma'am, you got any idea how much work it takes? What is it? You, you're really gorgeous. Excuse me? No, seriously, my heart. I, it's. It's aching for you. Come right? shoe fucking hell. This is not the time nor the place. My god, he's such a fucking simp. Yeah, everyone's a simp, apparently. Right? Except Fuck Edgeworth. Him. Edgeworth seems actually pretty okay. Yeah. Detective, pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. No, no, no. Okay, okay, I got it. No, Detective, tell us about the incident. Yes, sir, right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran of the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. That much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details on the incident itself. Yes, sir, I gotcha. Okay, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge, an old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under there is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met there, on top of the bridge. Why is this the first overhead, like, map that we've got that actually has color? And it's taking place in the past. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, well, oh well. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Hmm, I see. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warned that I absolutely despise conjecture. If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they even met there. Your Honor. If you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me as though I was some hoser. Detective, proceed with your testimony. Um, y yes, sir. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay, now. Listen carefully, kitten. Well, little mistake, this guy will drink it for morning tea. Trust me. Get ready. Why Maybe he's he... drinking tea instead of coffee at this point. <laughs> Maybe. Also, this might be weird to say, but he kind of looks charming? Yeah, I mean, not to say that, like, Godot doesn't look, you know, mm. cool and charming in his own right, but he, he's got a completely different personality. He seems very 
patient and caring. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, the, the pet name's a little strange, but I mean... Nah. She stood under the, you know, the law office and everything. So... Jeez. Yeah. Makes you wonder what happened. Yeah. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car truck and tried to make a getaway. Mr. Falls was arrested and the police checkpoint was set up at the base of the mountain. Hmm. Well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge. Naturally. Now, would the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Coming right up. Hey, hey, settle down there, kitten. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. Uh, I'm not trembling. It's just cold in here. The courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right? Especially for a beginner. I don't need you to worry about me. I mean... I mean, the defendant, the witness, everyone's a beginner in here. Huh. You got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you've got, kitten. It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Just remember those court procedure videos you stayed up all last night watching. Come on, you've been studying this law for years, you've read all the books, you finished watching all those videos and everything yesterday, you've got this. I, I, I have a whole library, you know, a, a bunch of law Literally books. Literally an entire bookshelf that was like, that like I actually, them, yeah, that I read, that I actually spent cover time cover reading, you know, study. they didn't just sit on my shelf collecting dust. I don't know who wouldn't read these law books if they're going to be in this practice. And yeah. I actually, because I read it on my plant, Charlie, he's grown so big and strong now. I mean, you should see him, honestly, in my window. He looks great. Man, I mean, if someone takes over my office after me, they better read those books. Yeah. They better. I, my, 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 my successor, whoever they may be, they, they better read all these books I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on collecting and studying. If I, they don't, I swear I will haunt them past the grave. From beyond the grave. That sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> and technically she does. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. I don't know if it's really haunting and she just kind of pops up. Right. This unknown person. You have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? The one who called Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant. Terry Falls. You uh, what? The, the defendant? The defendant called her? Sergeant Hawthorne was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about a phone call with Mr. Falls. I know. Yeah, a top secret memo that she left on her desk. Hmm. According to this note, it seems the one who called her to the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. Hmm. This bright idea was it to keep that note from me. Ha. Looks so like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. It's a detective's fault. Oh, sorry. It's, a dete it's a detective's fault. He's the one that said unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I, I, I just said it that way because the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect it to be so sneaky. Hmm. Cute because I guess he's young? I, I don't know, I guess. A bridge up in the mountains? But why meet there? Because it is a very important place to the defendant. That's why. What do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago, the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased under a bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. And the place where all of this occurred is, of course, Dusky Bridge, overlooking Eagle River. The very place where the Sergeant Hawthorne arrested to handcuff Mr. Falls. Ha. Uh, Turning to the scene of the crime. How nostalgic. Honestly, I was really kind of hoping it would be Grossberg. Yeah. I mean, you'd test those voice him anyway. Right, but I, just, I, I like doing his voice. Yeah. He eventually gets so garbled you can barely understand even anything he's saying. But I will say it is still neat to see Godot, a younger Godot, you know? Mm. Also, apparently Grossberg... 
used to be an alcoholic even before this DL6 incident? I guess? Hmm. Weird. Was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah, we were really on the ball. Wait a minute, DL6 incident would have already happened. Because that was when Edgeworth was young, young. It was when his father died. Oh, right. Who? Grossberg was the one that represented them in that, right? I think so, yeah. Okay. Huh. Uh, we found the criminal with them when they were on the murder. It was great! We even got to say, don't move! We've got you surrounded! Wait a second. Isn't there something weird about that? The location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains. So, how did they find out about the crime scene so quickly? Sergeant Hawthorne must have mentioned this phone call to someone else, right? Ha. Huh. If that's what had happened, then she would have been killed. She never mentioned the phone call from Mr. Falls, but she left a note on her desk about it. If only I had noticed it earlier. Maybe she'd still be alive. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. Mr. Falls had a car, then. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both went up there in a car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? No, no, of course not. It was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Hmm, car thieves. Not sure how I feel about car thieves. Is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. Naturally, that's the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Whoa, that... that doesn't look too comfortable. She's dead, <laughs> Your Honor. He's just so high that he doesn't recognize the dead body. He's like, oh man, she was sleeping in there? Yeah, she best have wicked cramps. Or she... He, he's just so fucking, like, high and out of his <laughs> mind. He just, like, doesn't even, like, give a shit. Just... Oh yeah, she's dead. <laughs> Wait, she's dead, right? Is yeah, it, yes, it, Your Honor. In, she's, in the photo, she's she's like dead, dead, like. Yeah, yeah. Okay, man, what an uncomfortable position to be in. I'd hate to go out like that. <laughs> be stuffed in a trunk? No, just it's just gonna suck, man. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. The victim, she was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. Ha. Huh. For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here. You can't tell from this photo, but the knife was stuck in her back, nice and firm. The condition of the body when it was discovered is a very important information. Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? What did the defendant have to say about this photo? What he always says, ma'am. I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. That's all he says. Nothing. I wouldn't say he did nothing, but he, at the very least, we know he stole a car. It's just what he always says, Your Honor. And then he always says... Uh, sorry. Uh, I told a little lie. Or something like that. Well, in any case, it seems he was caught and arrested. Precisely. That certainly is some impressive police work. Well, no. Actually, it's way too close for comfort. We set up that checkpoint just at over 5 p.m. We figured that Mr. Falls might just try to run. What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them arranged the meeting to meet at 4.30 p.m. And it takes approximately 30 minutes to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Hmm, that was kind of close. And then later, Mr. Falls could have slipped right by. Listen up, kitten. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. A t -t trap Walk into it carelessly, and it'll leave more than just a flush wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not! Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you'd better get some more information. And if you're going to get caught in a trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. The other famous contradictions. I sure hope I can find some of those. 
Okay, so now, what do we have? We've pressed on all of these, right? Yeah. So we have... Attorney's badge, the autopsy report... Updated autopsy report! <laughs> she died from blood loss. Between 4 and 5 p.m. There's a map of the bridge. Uh, Confidential police materials. Victims know. 438, that bridge, wear white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia, tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Okay, well, that's the first time we've heard Dahlia mentioned in this case. And met with Mr. Falls, brutally murdered. Stuck her body, trying to make a getaway. Photo of the trunk, don't see anything strange to you. Uh. Well, let's take a closer look where that isn't. It looks like the back is smashed open. With uh. With the lock on it. Yeah, but is that strange? I mean, if it's a stolen car and he had no way of... Wait. For most cars, the key that turns the ignition is... Also the key that opens it. So... If... That's a little weird. Well... Let... Wait a minute. It may not be anything large, but it is something to at least ask about, right? Yeah. Uh... What, what, was, what was that about? Okay, that didn't work. Uh, sorry, I, I just saw part 1-1, one, one. I was like, wait a minute, we're in chapter 4. And then I was like, oh wait, it says episode 4, so. <laughs> um... I, I don't know. Okay, so at the very beginning he says that an unknown person... But we already know that that person is false. Right, and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. And that's where she was really murdered. Colonel Sutton tried to make a getaway, that's where she. What's the final one? The... Mr. Falls was arrested in a police check when we set up at the base of the mountain. Okay. Well, I guess it's not really on the map. Try to make a getaway. There's no time I met with Mr. Falls. Oh, the wrong one. I meant to look at this. Falls 4.30 p.m. at that branch where white scarf for identification. Oh, she doesn't have the scarf in the truck photo. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Witness! Oh. Witness! What is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? Uh, I'm sorry. I totally forgot what I was going to say. This is... This is the first time I've ever had to actually address someone like that. Uh, you should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Fay, I'm not sure I like this. Hmph. <sighs> Say there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. Oh, that's right. Uh, coffee's basically supposed to be a substitute for alcohol. Right. Yeah, come on, Mia. Shake it off. You're a lawyer. Act like it. Detective! Yes, ma'am. This photo. You said that there was nothing peculiar about it. Is that correct? Y yeah, that's what I said. Well then, I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. The note? It very clearly says, wear white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like. That was the special request. Uh, I, um... I have one very simple question for you, Detective. Where is the white scarf? I can't seem to find it in this photo. Um, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. And you stopped there? You should have looked for it! Arrgh! <laughs> <laughs> the caller told her where to identify herself, so I'd expect she did just that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, do you have anything to say about this? Oh, I, I was expecting him to do the specific... Uh, uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. 
I see the defense is a little lacking. <laughs> the scarf you're searching so desperately for. Is it this one, perchance? Ah! Well, where, where would you find that, sir? On Dusky Bridge. I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. Well, why? Why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel. Uh, isn't that technically illegal? You can't remove things from a crime scene if you're not... I think it works a little bit differently in this world in that the prosecution is also technically head of, like, the detective department. Because, I mean, because he's the one that actually literally is given detective or gumshoe orders and whatnot. So, I mean, I guess. In a sense, he's kind of also, like, a leading detective. Jeez. So it's not technically illegal in that he's... Not necessarily by title, but he is technically a, a, an officer of the law in a sense, you know? I suppose. Well, anyway, uh, it's time to end the episode. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye.